All right, I promise this has nothing to do with math or data and everything to do with art. So look at the graph on the screen. This graph is for the original genetically modified plant, not what's being sold. The next graph that I'm going to show, I want you to look at the data that runs along, like the, the two lines, the dark green line and the turquoise line. And I'm going to fade in the NeoPX, which is the plant that's currently being sold. You're going to see the differences. So I'm going to start fading it in and it's going to swap at the headline. Watch the names at the top of the chart swap from Neo P1, okay, in green, turquoise, watch it swap to Neo PX. Remember that one is a golden pothos, a genetically modified golden pothos is P1, and then PX is a marble queen, supposedly a non-genetically modified plant. They're also just different genetics. Watch how the data doesn't change at all. And also watch how the y-axis adjusts. The top bound now is 800 with the Neo P1, and then it goes to 120 with the Neo PX. Same data, same noise in the data from the sensors. Is it made up data? They're different plants. Even if you observe the same plant twice, it would be different readings. And to be sure, the units on the y-axis are PPB or parts per billion of tooling, a VOC. This is gonna become very important as we discuss what in the hell is going on with Neo plants. All right, all of this started for me back a year ago, when I came across a Wired article and I made a short and a kind of crappy long form video about a GMO pothos coming to the market. That of course is the Neoplants P1. That plant was supposed to be genetically engineered and I believe they're still working on it. But since the company has launched their first product, it is now called NeoPX. It is a Marble Queen pothos and it is not a genetically modified plant. Kaylee Allen series about a month ago goes over this and digs into the white paper, but we dig into it a little bit more because I really didn't want to make this video. They seem like a decent company. They do have a very tech focused background and the CEO seems very like founder life, like a tech bro, lack of a better word. And he just kind of gave me a bit of a weird feeling. And I, I really wanted to meet the company and actually see what they were doing. And full disclosure, after Kaylee Allen's video dropped, I think they were trying to do some damage control. So they reached out to myself as well as a few other YouTubers that I have confirmed with to do sponsored videos. I declined that option to do it because Something just didn't feel right. And if you haven't seen Kaylee's video on this, so also there's actually two videos on it, check them out. To summarize her videos, essentially the company first came out with like a purple pothos, but it was actually just Photoshopped. It wasn't real. And it was marketed under a different company name. And as we know, when they launched the product, it was no longer genetically modified. They were just simply using these power drops, which is a bacteria and some food that they sell to you in a subscription-based model because they're a tech company and they need recurring revenue for their investors. But Kaylee does a great job explaining that. So I'm gonna kind of pick up where she left it, which is inside of the white papers because that's that chart that I showed you at the beginning. As Kaylee pointed out, 100% FAQ, 0% bullshit. If you have to say it, it might be. This also kind of kicked me off. There was a pretty critical Wired article review that my wife sent me about it, rating it a five out of 10, kind of saying it like, is it a bunch of hot air? So this and a few of the other things that I've mentioned made me dig into the science of it. It is now 7.50 PM and I've been focused on this all day, strictly researching this topic. And when I found the swapping of data, the manipulation of the data, that I had no other choice than to make this video, I feel like. And I reached out to the founder and the CTO, as well as the press email to get some sort of feedback on this. And I asked a bunch of technical questions. So I'll let you know if they respond to that. But quickly, it is a Marble Queen Pothos with some bacteria and a PLA and flax based planter that has a bunch of vents through it, which I guess helps, it definitely helps the roots of the plant, more air, more better, but it probably helps the main bacteria inside of the power drops, which is Pseudomonas putida. This bacteria, by the way, has been known and used historically for a long, long time, has a ton of research on how it bioremediates, essentially cleans the environment very effectively. But they've said they've cultivated these strains of bacteria, they've exposed them to a bunch of tooling and other vox to make these little bacteria kind of directedly evolve to be able to handle more of this VOC, this volatile organic compound. Tooling comes from like paint thinners, lacquers, markers. 
The big thing here is that this plant does not filter out PM 2.5, which is dust. And for most of the developing world that cooks on cook stoves inside of like small little huts and areas and small homes, PM 2.5, the dust of smoke is actually incredibly harmful to us. And you should use a HEPA filter, plug-in filter to circulate and clean the air. And if you'd like to remove Vox or the chemicals from like cleaning supplies, then use a carbon filter or a charcoal filter. So essentially what we're gonna be focusing on is the claim of 30X more effective than most air purifying houseplants. And I calculated exactly that number and I figured out how they got that. And if you click this little button, read our white paper, which just creeps me out because every cryptocurrency scam has a white paper. So this white paper is the Neo PX one. As I discussed, there's also a P1, which was the previous version, the GMO one. But all the first stuff is not that important to us. It gives an outline for the NASA study, which has been largely disproven, and how it keeps you know, plants in a bubble, exposes a gas into that bubble, and then it sees how that plant deals with it. So that's what they do here. And most people have refuted this NASA study, the clean air study of 1989, by just saying, just open the damn window. It's so challenging to compete with fresh air just coming into a window that an air purifier and definitely house plants can't really keep up. But I will say that a significant amount of the aeroids do consume the volatile organic compounds like benzene, toluene, and formaldehyde. But Neoplants has done a very crafty job of hand picking the data that they want to compare against and which plants they want to compare against and which chemicals or singular chemical of toluene they want to focus on. That's why we're going to talk about toluene. This is one of the better slides. It just shows how they self-select or they direct the evolution of this little bacteria that it has an ability to just deal with a high amount of this nasty chemical. It comes off of gas too, it comes out of car exhaust. So if you live near a freeway, but this has been done forever. This is nothing really new of self-selecting these little bacteria that are strong and survive and then replicating those over and over. As Kaylee Ellen said, I'm just not sure why they're not selling the power drops on their own. I think you can buy them. They're like 50 bucks or something wildly expensive. That's a lot of the critique is about the price and they compare it to like a Dyson filter and running that and changing the, the filter on that. But you effectively could turn a lot of the aeroids, the fast growing aeroids with a ton of surface area and fast growing like the epiprenum into an air purifying plant or like a supercharged air purifying plant because a lot of the purifying is happening at the soil level. So essentially they set up this experiment, like I said, it's like a glass little cage, it's 35 liters, and they inject a certain amount of toluene into this tank. There's a couple terms you have to know, PPB parts per billion, PPM parts per million. It's one in a million or one in a billion. One is a thousand times smaller or larger than the other. And here's our chart. This is the chart we've been talking about. I've already shown you that they're the same chart with different Y values on the vertical axis. And I also showed you that they just swap in Neo PX and Neo P1. But let's assume that one of these is telling the truth. This is the data from one of these plants, let's say. The just basic epi orium or the golden pothos is the top line. And it registers around 110 units, it's PPB this time, but 110, and their Neo PX is 90. So you've got 110 and you've got 90. And according to their study and how they set it up, they started at 750. So it looks like both of these plants brought them down to about 110 and 90, which is really great, even for just an epi without the power drops. So it begs the question, how much are these power drops really doing? How much weightlifting are they doing? Clearly there's some, but it's a marginal difference, right? It's like 10 or 20% difference. I'm not sure if that's statistically significant. And then if we look at tooling, like what the hell is tooling? We talked about it's from like markers, paint thinners, varnishes. It smells like a, like a paint thinner like a lacquer. So they're using like 100 units, 100 PPB. So I looked up what's like the common scientifically studied amount of toluene in the atmosphere. Outdoors, it's about one PPB, one unit, not 100. And indoors, it can range from like one to like eight. 12 Northern California office buildings were studied and they range from 0.7 to four PPB. So the scales they're using are so enormous. Ooh, whoops, this is the uh, this is the other one where they're using 700 parts per billion. But back in their current white paper, they're saying 
Our genetically modified bacteria are down to 90 and the one without it is at 110. Then the chart on the right, they say that's the CADR. It's an air quality metric. They normalized it for essentially like the size of the plant. They normalized the two values. I'm not exactly sure how they came up with this chart on the right where this shows like a 10x difference between the two values of just a typical NeoPX and the Epi. But this is down here. They use that same CADR for only tooling gas between some of the worst tooling absorbers of gas. Peace Lily, which is known for formaldehyde. Spider plant, I'm not sure. I don't remember for the from the NASA study and the snake plant. They average together these values. If you average together the snake plant, spider, peace lily, and pothos, you get 0 0.045 and you take that, put that in the denominator, you get 29.55. That's the infamous 30 times better. And then you get articles from CNET saying it's 30 times better. And this guy from Tech Radar saying, here's a bunch of pothos or epiprenum, and they're doing a 30 times better job, which is just not true. This is a very skewed way to manipulate the data in your favor. And bioengineering is used so much, such a buzzword. Granted, they do have two patents, one for the pot and one for the process of creating genetically modified plants and bacteria, I believe. It's a 365 page patent. But my point here is if you add the power drops to the average plant, it can probably help out a good amount. And also even without the power drops, the epiprenum aureum, just the regular epiprenum without anything added to it, takes the concentrations from 750 and brings it down to 110. And yes, the other plant brings it down to 90, which is better, which is awesome. And it's really cool that they do that. What's not really cool is that the data is skewed and we don't know, maybe this was a mistake. Maybe they just got sloppy with their graphics. I'm hoping that's what happened, but it's still the old marketing materials from a golden pothos here that we're looking at, the Neo P1. And it essentially shows how just an epi or ram stays constant, kind of around that 750 mark that they said they injected up here. But if you bring in the PX, the data doesn't change at all, but the y-axis does. And I would really hope that they would start testing these plants in, first of all, a real home scenario, not in a bubble. And number two, at levels that we're actually exposed to. Like we saw outside parts per billion of tooling is around one or a half. And in some of that like office buildings with closed indoor you know, a lot of people working and fax machines and copy machines going and markers out, furniture. That's between five and 10 parts per billion. So if you're going to do these studies, it should be around those levels that people are being exposed to. And also it should be encompassing of all Vox, which there's multiple volatile organic compounds, not just hand picking the data that you want to present to the audience. I'm not sure how the power drops do with benzenes or formaldehyde, it would be really cool to see all of the data and be very transparent with it. Because honestly, the marketing team seems like it's far more funded than the science team at this company. And you know, they, they do a great job of selling the vision. The website is very beautiful. Everything's very curated. If you look at any YouTube video, like this unlisted video that they sent to me because I was on the subscriber list three months ago. Here's the CEO Lionel, but the comments are always turned off and the comments are many times monitored on Instagram. And I asked lots of you guys on Instagram what you thought about this and your feedback was very interesting. So it essentially seems like Neoplants, they weren't able to get ahead with the P1, which is when they're releasing the PX plant, it's a marble pothos, but they keep showing the tissue cultured version of the P1, which is a golden pothos. I get it when you're making videos to put that in just because that's what you have, but you have a good amount of kind of critical comments here. I'm so, so confused. I thought this plant was gonna be bioengineered, not some soil drops in a pot that purifies the air. The original statement is this is Neoplants, the first generation of plants bioengineered to fight air pollution. Clearly stating the plant is bioengineered. I'm confused. A lot of us are. So two weeks ago, our current product NeoPX is not a bioengineered plant. This involves selecting, testing, enhancing bacteria found in nature over years of R&D to effectively clean common pollutants from the indoor air 30X, there's our number, 30X, better than a traditional houseplant. According to their data, the PX is 30 times better than the average of some of the worst tooling absorbers. 
and I still haven't been able to recreate the CAGR 10x better, but you know, they love that 30x number and that's what sells these plants. Essentially saying they're still working on P1, but they're dealing with what his video said, the founder, Lionel, is that they've had some inconsistencies in the performance of that plant, I assume in its ability to clean the air. And there you go, there's another one. Been following you since I first heard about it. Disappointing to find you sell a subscription to a powder to add to the plant to produce the effects. You should have been upfront from the beginning. And that they want you to reapply it every month is crazy. As Kaylee Allen pointed out, you really don't need to do it except for like every three months or so. And it might have a weird interaction with the soil, the microbial beneficial life that's in your soil, as well as your fertilizer. And many times the fertilizers are so strong that it will kill the beneficial bacteria in conventional plant growing. And here you have someone questioning the Dyson comparison. It's a bold comparison because the Dyson actually filters pollen, dust, PM 2.5, as well as Vox. Many of the Dyson filters do clean Vox because they do have a carbon filter. Look for activated charcoal HEPA filters. They exist. They're just expensive and they need to be replaced, but also have some plants around and ideally like use the power drops. It would make way more sense that they just sold the power drops, but this is all wrapped in like venture capital backed tech bro version for the houseplant industry, which a lot of us are calling BS on. And here you go. David says, this is quite literally a regular queen marble pothos, according to your white paper. Yep, it is. And then a lot of people stoked about it, which is awesome. But they don't have any likes like the, here you go. So technically you can add the power drops to any house plant as long as it replicates the plant setup with the airflow. You're basically selling a specific bacteria that enhances the plant's mechanism to absorb Vox. How much does it really cost to produce the bacteria and what exactly is the strain? The strain is Pseudomonas, you know I'm saying it wrong, Pseudomonas petita. And like do your research on it. Look in ResearchGate and just type it in and then like tooling and you'll find 20 years of studies explaining how this has been used forever. So a lot of people complaining about the cost makes total sense. This is actually pretty cool. At least the meters that are on the plants, it looks like they are using the P1. This is from 2023. So it looks like genetically modified plant on one side and the regular pothos on the other with the power drops, of course, doing heavy lifting. But again, we all don't live in these little bubbles. Even when the windows are closed, these buildings and rooms are breathing ever so slightly. And the best thing you can do is open a window. But this is really cool. That shows like the proper concentration. This is a pollutant in PPM. I have a lot of questions still about this plant. There probably will be a follow-up because I'm hoping to hear from the company. I think they need to clean up the data. I think they need to clean up how they're presenting this plant to us plant people. We're not just a bunch of like stoned out hippies. Some of us are but many of us dig into the tech of this and the science of it, and we nerd out on it and read about it. So I hope Neil Plants come back and explain to me some of their values and exactly what this bacteria is doing and when we can expect P1 and what we can expect from it. Because with the purple pothos, the different name changes, all this tech, kind of tech washing, their offices look super fancy. Everyone's like, you know, again, founder life and not super hardcore science, it seems. That white paper should be really clean and easy to read for us nerds who are going to click it and read it. So thank you for watching this week's video. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.